Every day we get attacked and accused. We hear it all. One of the things we hear a lot is that our ears are just being tickled, that we are cherry-picking verses, that we are rewriting the truth so that we can justify sin, that we are taking the easy way out. That unconditional love is the easy way out. So we want to talk about this because we know many of you hear and deal with the same things. Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid someday? So I call you up and you call me down. Would it be okay? Hello and welcome to the Freed Hearts Podcast. We're so glad you're here. My name is Robert Cottrell and I'm here as always with... Susan Cottrell. I'm so glad you're the one I'm always here with. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> welcome everyone. Thanks thanks so much for listening and joining us every week on this journey. Please connect with us. Um, we have vibrant community, supportive, inclusive community, and extensive resources. All of that is at freedhearts.org. And also please do email us at podcast at freedhearts.org. We would love to hear what you, uh, what you would like us to talk about, questions you have. As you've noticed, a lot of these emails, or these, these podcast uh, episodes come from emails that we receive because we hear the same question several times or in different, slightly different ways, so we do a podcast on it. Um, so if you have a question, if you have something you'd like us to talk about, please email us, yeah? Yeah? Yes. You still here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just letting you talk. That's okay. Thought you were talking to them. Well, yes, I absolutely. Was, I just wanted to hear your voice. <laughs> so I hear your voice every day, and that's beautiful. But we hear other stuff every day <laughs> that's not so beautiful. We hear everything every day. I mean, I, I hear this because I mainly am the social media presence. Right. But you get it in, in emails as well. But I, we hear it every day. We get, every, we get attacked in every way. We get accused in every way. And, you know, it really used to get to me. <laughs> and now it's comical at times, but, but my response is I'm still angry, but I'm angry at the system that led to this, not so much the person spewing this false teaching that's been ingrained in them. You know what I mean? Well, one of the things that we hear a lot is that our ears are just being tickled, that we're cherry picking verses, that we're rewriting the truth so that we can justify our child's quote sin or our quote sin. And that we're just taking the easy way out. That unconditional love is the easy way out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to talk about this today because I know that many of you deal with the same things. You hear the same things. You get the same things said to you. So we want to help us all today by talking about this. Well, we got an email telling us how, how wrong we were, how we were taking the easy way out, and telling us that we were separated from God sinning and in need of a redeemer. So uh, yeah, thanks for the email. Uh, but what I want to do today is I want to focus on how you responded. So I'm going to let you take it from here okay. and just, you can take it however you want here and just share how you responded to that email. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. So Barbara, you're asking good questions at the heart of the conversation. I can give you my theology very easily. It's everything Jesus said. Love your neighbor as yourself, which necessarily includes loving yourself. Treat others as you want to be treated. Don't treat them as you don't want to be treated. Anything you do that doesn't line up with love and doesn't feel like love to the recipient is out of alignment. If you're giving your sacrifice, i.e. serving God, going to church, whatever it is you're doing in the name of God, if you're doing that and you remember someone has something against you, go reconcile with them and then come back to your service for God. Christians have entire communities with something against them. Those who've been shamed, shunned, condemned, ejected from church, LGBTQ people, people with AIDS, people that all through the 80s, people the church has judged as inadequate instead of loving them. All kinds of people. If Christians would seek to reconcile with these people to make things right with them, which would necessitate humility and admission of wrong done and apology, people would have much less against them. The world would change for the better. Only humility will bring reconciliation. 
We cannot get there if we come from pride as know-it-alls. And I say that with my own humility because that was me many years ago. Mm. Not, not too many years ago, um, to some degree. Yeah, she was asking about your theology here. What is your yeah. theology? And you're just yeah. taking the easy way out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the easy way out <laughs> is not. So this well, is the easy it's way out not is... the easy way out to say when somebody has something against you and you just say, well, that's your problem. You're a sinner. Yeah. That's the easy way yeah, out. Yeah, the easy way out is us versus them. It's yeah. that, well, oh, they're, we're the us, they're the them. Right. So we if separate. If there's a problem, I'm on. right and yeah. you're wrong. That's the easy way out. Yeah. I'm saying... Uh, we're not taking the easy way out. Yeah. If you if you really are serious about not taking the easy way out, then go clean up the messes yeah. with people you have harmed and offended and hurt. Yeah, and and your theology is to take seriously what Jesus said about not replacing God's commands to care for each other with traditions of men. Yes, he warned strongly that that I tell you that God's commands to love each other. You set aside in favor of your traditions. Okay, that's a, that's a verse we need to be yeah. really aware of. And you, Barbara, yeah, refer... Yeah, we're going to cherry pick verses, why not that? Yeah, one? right. Yeah. All right, let's right. cherry pick verses here. Okay, I'll, I'll stop. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> so, Barbara, you referred to our separation and sinfulness and need for a Redeemer. I disagree with those foundational assumptions. Through my own de- deconstruction in ongoing prayer and deep study and exegesis in seminary, I no longer believe that's what Jesus meant. I think it is all what Jesus, all of that that you just said, separation, sinfulness, need for a redeemer, is all what Jesus referred to as traditions of men. I know you can come back at me with scriptures. But please don't, as those are all based on translations and interpretations and edits and more interpretations and more translations and more edits and cherry picking, which are all traditions of men. And I back that up with the observation of Jesus as he addressed the most learned, scholarly, religious leaders who'd studied scripture their entire lives, and he told them they were wrong. They were wrong. They'd gotten God completely wrong. They studied the scriptures and they got God completely wrong. They were hurting and rejecting people from community based on their faulty theology and traditions of men. You can do your own work on that if you're interested. I won't answer that question here. There's too much to say. But that verse about replacing God's commands with traditions of men should be the scariest one in the Bible to religious leaders. And I don't think I've ever heard it taught in church. Mm -hmm. That speaks volumes. Yes. So talk about cherry picking. It's very convenient to squish everything I've been saying into picking and choosing to suit myself to imply that I'm taking the easy way out. But let me correct you there. My theology does suit me. And it's not the easy way out. It's the narrow road. Yes, we are all good and created in God's image. That right there is is in the story. It's right in the story. The so-called separation from God is not so clear, though that is literally more than I can do right here. But that is a that is a misinterpretation, a blown up yeah. misinterpretation. For me to see God's image in everyone I meet, does that sound easy? It's not. It's much easier to believe that some people are just too much. Some people it would be easier just to loathe. You know, Part of that too is, is when Jesus said it's easy to love your friends. Yeah. Yeah, but people who are, de- who are dismantling this community that we love and care about, it's not easy to see Jesus in them. Yeah. It's not easy to love them. It's much easier to loathe them. But to see them in God's image does suit me. It suits me that it suits the me that is created in God's image, not the me that wants to judge and condemn no, and be good. right about and be better than. That's so good. <laughs> does it sound easy to love my neighbor? Nope, not always. Often it's much easier to think of all the ways they're wrong and then excuse myself from helping them. 
Remember the Pharisees Pharisees doing that? Asking who's my neighbor? So they could get a, a workaround to get out of helping people, you know, more than absol- they absolutely had to? Yeah, but it suits me to help them. It suits me to love them with hands and feet on it, not just saying, I love you, but. It fits the image of God in which I was created. Yeah? So what about the wrongs you've committed? It's not easy to dig around and understand what straight cisgender people have done to LGBTQ people or men have done to women or white people have done to black people or how we've left our children unprotected. Much easier to think they're just blowing things out of proportion. But it suits me, the me created in God's image, to listen to their stories and understand where perhaps we've been wrong about them. One of the worst traditions of men is to view Jesus as a free pass for those in the know who say the right incantation. Mm -hmm. You may not know that the Bible never says that we need to ask Jesus into our heart to be our Savior. It never does. I was shocked. In fact, that that even that wasn't even a concept until right. several hundred years later. We'll, right. we'll get into that at some point, but that wasn't right. even a concept. Right. It was never later. about that. Yeah. To to have faith in Christ, faith actually meant your actions. Mm. And so it was to to act toward people like Jesus did, to act toward the mm. least of these like Jesus did. So that too, that whole ask Jesus into your heart to be a, your savior is a tradition of men that allows us to separate into those who are in, in with God and those who are not. And that sure sounds to me like picking and choosing. Our traditions of men have turned Jesus into a get out of hell free card and a free to judge others card because after all, we're following him. Never mind that we're not doing what he said. And the things that we're teaching primarily come from Paul who was serving a different purpose than Jesus. He was trying to survive with this small fledgling group through occupied uh, occupied areas, okay? <laughs> There's a meme that I that we shared <laughs> recently that said said if we were a church in Paul's time, we're going to get a letter. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's right. <laughs> Never mind that we're doing what religious leaders said, aka the traditions of men not what Jesus said. And the word saved and salvation in the Bible mean to be saved out of our current situation, to be made whole, to be healed, to be restored in our lives right now from our current trials and tribulations. The, it fear, does, the fear, the insecurity, the, yes. the all that stuff that we're, that's in, in our head that we talked about before. Yeah. yeah. They do not mean saving us out of earth and into heaven or out of hell and into heaven. They do not mean that. You want to talk about cherry picking? You want to talk about what suits you? Is to believe that this is uh, about hell and heaven. It is not. It is about how we are today with each other. And the hell and heaven part is a tradition of men. So, If you think that the only purpose of Jesus is to redeem us to the great by and by in the sky when I die, then the whole point has been lost on you. You've lost the plot. And it came from bad teaching. It's very common, but it's from bad teaching. So why do we need Jesus? We're asked that all the time. If there's no hell, why do we need Jesus? In fact, we have have an upcoming episode here and just a few more that I think we're going to talk about. Is Jesus still relevant? to us. And it's it's just, I'm, I've, I'm working on that now and it's going to be fun. Yeah. (laughs) It's great. So why, that's like asking, um, if your father doesn't stand there with a stick ready to beat you, then why would you obey him? Okay. Is that, that's why you're obeying or is it a love relationship and you know that there's something good offered in there? Okay. So, so why do we need Jesus? We need him to love our neighbor when the love required exceeds our reach. We need him to help others when our desire to help is gone. We need him in our everyday inability and stuckness to be all that God created us and invited us to be. But we don't need him because we're inherently sinful. 
we are not, which the church continues to double down on, all the while ignoring the image of God in us. We talked last week about look who has, look who benefits from that. And right. the church, and we've talked about this before as well, that, you know, the church has to give you a, a fear-based reason to stay in the pews. Right. You know, otherwise, so. wouldn't you graduate at some point? Have you heard enough times the story of the woman at the well? Can you move on? Yeah, well, it's supposed is to be it, church yeah. is, is community, but that community not is conditional. It, it, it is conditional, so it's right. Not you can easily yeah. be thrown out, so it's really not yeah. community. Yeah, I'm sorry, go on, babe. We need him. You say I don't doubt that we're made in His image and therefore good. I don't disbelieve that. Well, good. But if you really believed it, it would stop you in your tracks. It would make you wonder why that is not the main point of every sermon taught by every religious leader every week. Created in God's image? Wow, that is a magnificent thing to say. Oh my gosh, bigger than our hearts can grasp. And it's true. Do you think that the LGBTQ people in that the church villainizes week after week after week believe they're created in the image of God? Those who do. Believe it in spite of the church, not because of it. Shame on the traditions of men who let the supposed fall supersede our image in God. Wow, that's profound. That's great. And I appreciate your heart, Barbara, and I know that you're responding based on what you've been taught. I was taught the same things in church for 20 years. Then when God showed me all the pain that that version of Christianity has caused, I was undone, and to hear that was not easy, but it suited me. It suited the image of God in me. To let God show me where I was wrong, where my traditions were wrong, and what was right, that was not at all easy. It took courage and humility and sacrifice, and I recommend that, and it suited me. Then I had no choice but to speak out against the vitriolic teachings of the church, not all the teachings, but the vitriolic ones that incite judgment and condemnation and, yes, hate. Don't back away from that word. It is hate. It was not easy. I gave up my community and some of my family who rejected me, but I gained a depth with God that I previously did not know. I gained the attributes of Christ, the aroma of Christ, the fruits of the Spirit, much more than I ever had when I believed in the traditions of men that the church taught me. Turns out, it suited me. You say, I don't talk about what we can do. Here's what we can do. You said, I just talk about what we don't do this and that, but what can we do? Here's what we can do. Exactly what Jesus showed us. Love others as we love ourselves, which includes helping them, not just saying, I love you, which is just a mind game. If the actions don't follow it up, it's useless to say, I love you. I love you, but is less than useless. Don't say we love God and then not love your neighbor because then you're a liar. First John 4 20. Those are the things we are to do. And they're way harder than sitting in comfort week after week, judging others but it suits us. And you know, there's a lot when you talk about what can we do, we can love our neighbor, we can be compassionate and kind. We could have a list a mile long of what that means as far as, as far as helping, as far as feeding, as far as comforting, yes, all that kind of stuff. So don't, that's not a light thing. That, that's not a light minor thing to say is that we love and show compassion for and acceptance right. and inclusion of our neighbor. Right. All of our neighbors. That's, that's the whole point. It is not mental assent. It is not saying the right creed. Yeah. It is none of that. Those are all traditions of and men. If we're not about that, we're missing the whole point. The whole lost the plot completely. I care about this greatly. I care about the people being hurt by it, or I just spend my time doing other things. But this is what I came here to do. Yeah, you know, just what, what struck me is when you talked about leaving <laughs> family, this has not been easy. And I, I know we have, quote, suffered or paid the price so much less than so many of you out there. Right. But if they only knew <laughs> our lives, even, even now, 
and the things that we deal with from a, a, on a daily basis, on a financial basis, on a family basis, this is not and never has been easy. Just saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is not the easy way out <laughs> at all. Nope. But this is what we came here to do, Rob. This is, this is our expression of God's image in us. And as much work as it is, we love it. Hard yes. work for yes. both Absolutely. you and me. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for writing. And I mean that sincerely. And I appreciate the struggle that this represents. I'm also happy to walk alongside people who are shifting their understanding. I'm delighted to do it. And people also have to do their own work to press into spirit, to find out what God really wants to show them. That's how God got me going here. And God wants to show us plenty. So if I can help you along the way, and this I'm saying to the, re- the listeners right now, too, maybe you've passed this on to somebody who would benefit from hearing this. If I can help you along the way, let me know. I'd be delighted to. And we have a website full of resources with links to great articles and videos. We have my books and video courses and YouTube channel and podcast, mm-hmm. all available a bit, all available to help you make sense of this journey and to understand that you're on the right track. And by the way, by the way, if there's any resource, some of our resources have a cost to them for us to produce them. Uh, if there's any resource that you need and you truly can't afford it, just email us and we'll mm-hmm. find a way to get mm-hmm. it to you. Yeah. So, okay. We never want that to be a hindrance. Yeah. So all, all of these things, all of this moving in you is spirit calling you, mm. not you seeking to do what suits you. It, what suits you is to sit there and just do the things you've always done, but it doesn't suit you, the image of God in you. It suits just your flesh. The truth of your image of God mm. wants truth here, wants to understand this deeply. And it does suit you. It does suit you, yeah. the image of God in you. Yeah, beloved, you are created in the image of God, spirit, the universe. Oh, my gosh. That right there is all we need to know. I mean, like, look, we could plumb yeah. that depth. We could explore that for the rest of our lives. I mean, as we about to wrap up and we're done, go to the mirror and go, God? <laughs> Seriously. 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 Wow. You know what Look I mean? for that image of God in you. Yeah. Because that's where it is. You are beloved and you deserve to know that. Yeah. Okay. Great job in that response. That was really mm, nice. Thanks, honey. So next time we're going to kind of continue this. We're, we're continuing this kind of ramping up with some of the things we're talking about here, but we need, it's a journey and it's yeah. what's next for all of us on the journey. So next time we're going to talk about four questions, four questions that non-affirming people ask that are often tough to deal with and that can be a little bit scary. So that's going to be cool too. So there we go. We'll talk to you next time. We love you. Bye. Bye. Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid someday? So I call you up and you call me down. Would it be okay?